My dad had a 50cc scooter and we lived in a fairly small town and I used to knock it off when he wasn't at home and win dirt bike riding. And you get sucked in, you know. I kind of started racing in 72. It's physical. Fitness plays a part in your performance and then it's mechanical as well. I got into this business fairly early in 1982. I probably could have made a lot of money doing something else, but 99% of the conversation with the people that walk into your shop is their passion. It's the whole experience. So it's not like selling fridges. The club owns its own track at Bulladeela, so we'll go up there Friday night, set up a camp, you know, I've got my van set up with all the camping equipment and barbecues and tents and we run races all day. There's always somebody at your level you can have a bit of a ding-dong battle with. But you can punch the air sometimes coming third, because you just feel so good about it, you know. I necessarily need to win, but that winning helps. <laughs> Now that's before my era, that's that 650 Triumph Matisse. I bought that second hand and uh, had a ride of it and loved it. And it was also, the, the category was dying in our club a little bit. So I thought, oh well, you know, we can maybe try to build that class up, which is a pre-70 race bike class. You know, so that's got its own idiosyncrasies. Right hand gear change where everything else is left hand gear change. Luckily it's the normal pattern, it's not upside down. I do own one other one which is upside down, so first is up and the rest is... So that can be really confusing during the day when you're swapping bikes all day. The next one up was the 81 Yamaha H model. That was actually, I, that was one of the earlier purchases. I bought that from a guy that restored it and I just liked the bike. And I've raced that now, maybe even 10 years, non-stop without any major hassles on it. It's a 250, um, so it's a little bit peaky, which means it delivers its power at, at the top end of the rev range. It's not like the 500s, which have got a lot of torque. You've got to feather the clutch and, and um, you've got to pick your gear. And it's, it's pretty precise racing. In 81, that one bike, 490 Mako, outsold all the Hondas in the US. Special bike to ride, fantastic chassis. It's really accurate steering bike. It's really precise. You can throw a five cent piece on the ground and run over it lap after lap after lap. And it's totally predictable. You know, the front end, you can poke it into a corner at warp speed and you know it won't let you down. The one that does rip your arm off is the 500 Honda. It's got a reed valve motor on it, it's much more powerful, it handles better, it's actually a much faster motorbike. If you're not careful, you can come undone real quick on that one. Probably my favourite bike to ride. If I ever go and practice, I'll take my modern bike and I'll take that 500. It's just special. You've got to watch the power, but um, again, once you're in the groove on that bike, it's uh, almost as quick as a modern bike. I mightn't spend hours polishing them, but that's not my bag. Some people's bag is to turn up at the race meeting and they're just pristine. That's not my thing. You know, I'd rather win a race than have a shiny bike. <laughs>